What if I told you that this ancient technology pen and paper is more powerful for your brain than any app on your phone? Imagine you're sitting in an important presentation. The speaker is sharing insights you need to remember. You look around the room. Half the people are typing on laptops, fingers flying across keyboards, screens glowing. The other half are writing by hand slower, more deliberate, pens moving across paper. Everyone's capturing the same information. But if neuroscientists could peer inside their brains right now, they'd see something startling. The laptop users, their brains show minimal activity. A small cluster of neurons managing finger movements. That's it. The rest, quiet. But the handwriters, their brains are alive. Multiple regions lit up simultaneously, neural pathways communicating in complex patterns across the entire cortex. Same room, same content, radically different brain engagement. And this is exactly what researchers discovered in the lab. We're living in the age of digital everything. The average person types 10 times more than they write. Notebooks are becoming obsolete. We've convinced ourselves that faster is better. But here's what nobody tells you. Studies from Princeton and UCLA tested students learning the exact same material. Half type notes half wrote by hand. The laptop users wrote more. Their notes were longer, more detailed, more complete. Yet when tested on conceptual understanding, they scored 20% lower. 20% worse, despite having better notes. The reason? Typing creates what psychologists call the illusion of learning. Your fingers move. Information flows onto the screen. You feel productive. But your brain? It's barely engaged. You're collecting data, not processing understanding. And this isn't just about students in classrooms. If you're in meetings, reading books, trying to master complex ideas, this affects how well you actually learn and remember anything that matters. So, what's really happening in your brain? And how do you fix it? The neuroscience. Let's start with what neuroscience has discovered. Researchers using brain imaging technology found that when you write by hand, three distinct areas of your brain activate simultaneously. Your motor cortex controls the precise movement of each letter. Your visual processing areas track every curve and stroke you create. And your language circuits engage deeply with the meaning of what you're writing. But when you type, only your motor cortex lights up. You're just pressing buttons. The rest of your brain is disengaged. Think about the actual mechanics. When you write the letter S, your hand creates a unique flowing gesture. The letter T demands something different, a vertical line, then a cross. Every letter requires your brain to actively construct its shape. But on a keyboard, every key feels identical. Click, click, click. No cognitive effort required. And here's where it gets really interesting. Scientists monitoring brain waves discovered that handwriting produces specific electrical patterns, theta waves, and alpha waves that pulse in harmony across your entire brain. These aren't random signals. Theta waves encode new information and boost your working memory. Alpha waves cement that information into long-term storage. These exact patterns are the signature of deep learning. They don't appear when you type. Your brain also has something called the reticular activating system. Think of it as your neural attention filter. It decides what information is important enough to actually remember. When you engage your hand, your eyes, and your thinking simultaneously, you're sending a powerful message to this system. Pay attention. This matters. Store this. A study from Tokyo University proved the impact. Students who wrote notes by hand had 34% better recall one week later compared to those who typed. Not 5% better. Not 10%. 34%. But why such a dramatic difference? Because handwriting forces your brain to do three things typing completely bypasses. First, encoding. The slower speed means you can't transcribe word for word. You have to think. Select what matters and rephrase. You're processing, not recording. Second, consolidation. 
The hand-eye brain coordination creates multiple memory pathways. You remember the visual layout of the page, the motor sensation of writing, the spatial location of where you wrote something. Third, retrieval. Later, when you need to recall information, your brain has multiple hooks to grab onto. You don't just remember the idea. You remember writing it in the top corner, how your hand moved, how it connected to the point above it. This is exactly what Princeton researchers found. Laptop users transcribed lectures almost word for word. Handwriters were forced to synthesize and summarize. On tests, the handwriters scored 23% higher on conceptual questions. Your brain wasn't designed for keyboards. It was designed for hands. The stupidity traps. Now here's where smart people make critical mistakes. Trap number one. They confuse speed with productivity. I can type 80 words per minute, so I'll capture more information and learn more. But that logic is backwards. When learning is too easy, it doesn't stick. This is what psychologist Robert Bjork calls desirable difficulty. The effort of handwriting is precisely what makes it effective. Trap number two, the multitasking delusion. When you're on a laptop, the temptation is constant. Check email, open a tab, look something up. Your attention fragments into pieces. Research shows this divided attention causes a 40% drop in retention. With pen and paper, no notifications, no distractions. Just you and the information. Trap number three, overconfidence in your notes. You type pages of detailed notes and think, I've got this covered. But without proper encoding, there's nothing to retrieve later. You have the information stored externally, but you don't actually own it internally. Let me tell you about a student who learned this lesson. She was one of the most dedicated students in her class. Always early, front row, never missed an assignment. She typed so fast during lectures, she could have been a professional transcriptionist. But the information wasn't sticking. Despite having the most complete notes in the class, lectures went in one ear and straight out the other. Her professor suggested one simple change. Pick up a pen. The results were immediate. Suddenly, she couldn't transcribe everything she had to think. She had to choose what mattered. She had to put ideas into her own words. Her comprehension and grades transformed not because she studied harder, but because she was finally encoding the material properly, the practical framework. So, what do you actually do with this information? Let me give you three principles that leverage how your brain actually works. Principle one, slow down to speed up. When you're in a meeting or learning something important, Resist the urge to capture everything. Your hand can't write at the speed of speech, and that's the point. Force yourself to listen first, then write only what matters in your own words, not transcription, translation. This feels slower in the moment, but a week later, you'll remember 30% more than the person who typed frantically. Principle 2. Make it visual. Make it yours. Your handwritten notes should look messy and personal. Draw arrows between related ideas. Underline what surprises you. Put question marks next to things you don't fully understand. Sketch a quick diagram if it helps. These aren't aesthetic choices, they're memory anchors. When you review later, your brain doesn't just see words. It sees a landscape of your thinking. This is why borrowing someone else's handwritten notes rarely works. You're missing the cognitive fingerprint that makes them stick. Principle 3. Write to review. Here's what high performers do differently. After a meeting or lecture, they don't just file their notes away. Within 24 hours, they write a brief summary from memory without looking at the original notes first. This retrieval practice is what neuroscience calls the testing effect. You're not just reviewing information you're strengthening the exact neural pathways you'll need when it matters. Richard Branson credits his handwritten notebooks for building Virgin. Bill Gates takes handwritten notes during his famous Think Weeks. J.K. Rowling plotted all seven Harry Potter books by hand. These aren't nostalgic habits. They're cognitive advantages. 
The pattern is clear. High achievers use handwriting for thinking, not just recording. The most powerful tool for thinking costs 50 cents and fits in your pocket. Every time you choose handwriting, you're choosing real learning over the illusion of productivity.